Do you want to come down? Come on. Good boy. Very good. Very good. Ultra. Come in, boy. Very good, boy. Perfect. Right, now we're turning horizontally. Usually monkeys are happy either way. So it's not a big issue. Here we go. And now we go downstairs for the scanner. Here is the boy. Now he's in this chair because we need to transport him downstairs and then we want him to come out with his head because we're going to scan him very soon. He's happy to come because he knows he will get his peanuts. Good boy. Very good. Need to remove this cap. We use the head post in order to keep him still during the scan because the image quality obviously would be uh, much better if the monkey doesn't move. And now we are ready to go in. All right, so here we have the monkey. We have a CCTV camera that um, can see how it's, how it's going inside the scanner. So in face of him, there is a, a computer screen. And below him, there are two hand sensors that can detect hand movement. So he will sort of respond with his hands left or right. His head is fixed because uh, we cannot acquire fMRI images if he's moving. And he has these coils uh, on the left and right that basically allow to receive um, this signal that is produced by brain activity. Every two seconds uh, we get an image, a complete image of the brain. What we can measure there are slight differences, slight changes. Um, we can determine which brain areas are more active in certain, uh, in certain time points when the monkeys make certain decisions. So you see, you see changes every two seconds roughly, but they're very, very subtle changes. The signal that we pick up is very, very small. Um, so therefore you have to scan them for, say, half an hour See, for example, this is an image that we acquired while the animal was asleep, um, so anesthetized, and there we can zoom through the brain um, completely. Here below, you can see his hand when they move, so he usually keeps them next to the body, like he sits as a cat would sit, and he receives quite a bit of juice, so you don't actually see it, but through this tube that goes to his mouth, cranberry, I think, or black currant that monkeys like a lot. So they learn that, for example, when the square is blue, this is more valuable, they will drink more, and when it's green, they will drink less. And at the same time, there are dots. So these dots represent the probability, so they do not always drink juice, but only a certain percentage of the time. And so we train them for, for months uh, to learn independently about the color and uh, that is the magnitude and the number of dots that is the probability. And now in the scanner, we want to see when they see this new stimuli, if they are able to uh, sort of anticipate what is going to happen. So this task is relatively easy because they just need to press when they see a stimulus. They don't really need to make a choice, but we want to see what happens in their brain. Uh, when they make this movement because they can anticipate uh, the likely outcome even if this is not certain but is probabilistic. So what we actually want to see is not his behavior by itself but what happens in the brain, so what expectation he has. And this is something you don't do in humans because usually humans 
can participate in an experiment, but they just come once and they do one hour. But these animals can be trained and so follow through time so we can see their learning pattern and see how their brain uh, activity changes through this learning.